Hi everybody, Mr. Poller here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel to graph a data set that follows a pattern of radioactive decay. This is one of the graphs that I created. Uh, this is actually from a FET simulation that is looking at the radioactive decay of carbon-14 nuclei. Uh, so these go through a process of beta minus decay. So in running this simulation, I collected the following data set. Uh, if you were to run that simulation, you might get a slightly different data set, but we're gonna go ahead and graph the data set that I collected. Uh, so I created this graph that looks like this. Okay, but what I wanna do is actually show you the process for creating this graph. Okay, so let's say goodbye to our graph. Ready, set, bam, gone. Okay, now, um, so this is my data set right here. You can see that in column A, I have entered the number of years. In this uh, simulation, number of years is the independent variable. In the second column, the B column right here, I've put in the number of remaining carbon-14 nuclei. Uh, so this is the dependent variable in the experiment. Uh, so when you graph in Google Sheets or Excel, you want to put your independent variable in the first column, dependent variable goes into the second column. Now, um, I like to add the headers here too. Uh, you could create this graph just putting in the numbers. However, if I put these in and highlight all of this, this is going to help me uh, make the process of creating the graph go a little bit more quickly. I'm going to click and drag to highlight all of my data, and then I'm going to choose Insert, Chart, and it's going to take a moment for that to pop up, and it, you can see that it just puts it over here. Uh, I can move that around. I'm going to leave it here for now. Um, I want to choose Scatter Chart. Okay, so if it doesn't pop up that way for you, if it comes up like this initially, you're going to go under chart type and you're going to go down and you're going to choose scatter. Okay, now um, I've got these boxes checked. Use row one as headers, use column A as labels. On my x axis, which is the independent variable, I will get that pre populated. It'll say number of years, just like it does here. And then uh, for my dependent variable, my y-axis, it's labeling carbon-14 nuclei, just like I had here. Now, if I wanna change that, I can click into there and I can change um, what that says. So I can always go back and change that later. Uh, here is the title for my graph, carbon-14 nuclei versus number of years. Um, if I want to clarify here, um, I could just say something like uh, remaining carbon-14 nuclei versus number of years. If I want to edit that again, I just click into that box and I can edit that. Okay, now I have the chart editor open here. It's not always gonna be open. So if I wanna bring up that chart editor, I just go to my chart and just go ahead and double click on it. All right, now under customize, I'm gonna go here under series. I have my chart titles and axes titles how I want them already. Uh, so I'm gonna go under series and the thing that I really want to do here is to go ahead and add the trend line. Okay, now you can see initially what gets placed in is a linear trend line. However, this is radioactive decay, which is not a linear relationship. So I need to go ahead and change this. I'm gonna choose exponential, All right? So this is uh, my appropriate trend line for radioactive decay process. I'm choosing an exponential fit under label, I'm going to say use equation, and I'm going to display my R squared value. And then I can just go ahead and close this out. And I can just go ahead and move this, sorry. I can go ahead and move my chart. And if I want, I can just click the corner, drag to resize it. The nice thing in Google Sheets is that if I'm working on writing a paper for an experiment, I can go ahead and insert this graph directly into my paper. If I go back into my Google Sheet and edit, the edit will, as long as I link it, the edit that I make in the Google Sheet will directly or immediately transfer over to the paper that I'm writing. Okay, so that was um, how I'm creating this graph for data from the FET simulation looking at the decay process of carbon-14. Uh, so in this one, 
This is another graph showing the process of radioactive decay. Uh, this one would match up with the simulation. Some of them you put M&Ms or Skittles into a shoebox. Some teachers have you use pennies. And what you do is you close the box, you shake it, uh, you open it up. And if you're using pennies, for example, you might take out all the pennies that are heads up. And then you um, close the box and shake it again. And once again, after doing that, you're going to remove all the pennies that are heads up. Each time that you do that, you should be removing approximately half of the pennies. So if we ran an ideal simulation, uh, we might start with 256 pennies in the shoebox. And uh, we would say the number of half-lives that has occurred at this point in the simulation is zero because we have yet to shake the box and remove any pennies. So this is my initial, my starting amount. Then I shake the box one time with the top closed, shake the box, open it up. I remove the pennies that are heads up. Now, if everything goes exactly like probability would predict, we would remove half the pennies. We would have 128 pennies remaining in the shoebox. Second time through, we would drop down to 64, then 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1, and then finally 0 after 9 times of shaking the shoebox. So to create the graph here, what I'm going to do once again is I'm going to click and drag to highlight all of my data. I'm going to insert, chart. I'm not going to edit any of the labels on the axes this time. You can see that it's automatically doing a scatter chart. Remember, I want to always select scatter chart. Under customize, I'll go to series. And then I'm going to add my trend line. Again, Google thinks this should be linear, but I need to change this to exponential. Okay. And for my label, I'm going to use the equation and I'm going to show the R squared value. Okay. Now, so here's my, uh, here's my graph. My, my data points are plotted. I have a curve, uh, that, which is fit to the data points. That's my trend line an exponential trend line. And I have a, equation uh, displaying right here. And I can actually go ahead if I want to, sorry. Let's go ahead and resize this graph and just make our equation a little bit easier to read. So to do that, I want to double click on my equation. And the auto position is to put it right under the title. If I don't like that, I can go ahead and put it on the right side. Um, now, if I close this, you can see it moved it over here. Um, if I click on it again, I can choose some other things too. So I can change the font size. Um, so I'm going to make that a larger font for my equation. You can see that it's resized it here. And if I drag here, I can make it display and look a little nicer. Now, in my equation for radioactive decay, um, what I have is... Um, n equals n naught e to the negative lambda x. Now, what is uh, what? What do all these variables represent? N would represent the number of remaining unstable nuclei, or the number of remaining radioactive nuclei. N sub zero is actually this number right here, and this should be the starting number of radioactive nuclei. You can see I started with 256 here. I get 256 here. I'm getting exactly 256 because this is an ideal data set. If you run an actual experiment where you don't always reduce exactly by half, you won't get your n sub zero to be exactly the starting number. Um, then we have e uh, to the negative 0 0.693. This is something called lambda or the decay constant. And then x would be your independent variable, which is the number of half-lives in the simulation. This is the number of times that you shook the shoebox, opened it up, and removed the pennies that were heads up. Now, if I want to create this same graph in Excel, so I'm just going to go ahead and take my data, copy it, and we'll just do a blank workbook in Excel. I'll show you guys how to do this in Excel too. For some things, I think Excel is a little nicer to work with than Google Sheets. 
Uh, but then there are things that are nicer in Google Sheets than Excel. So it just kind of depends on your personal preferences. So we're going to go ahead and paste in our data. There it comes. Okay. So in Google, um, you know, we had one set of uh, procedures to follow to create the chart, the graph. In Excel, it's a little bit different, but um, it's, it's not hard. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of my data here. And I'm going to insert. And I'm going to choose a chart right here in the middle. And I'm going to choose this one right here, which is a scatter chart. OK. Now, um, what I want to do here is uh, edit some properties of my chart. Just make that a little bit bigger so you can see. OK, so to uh, format the chart area, I just double click on the chart area. Um, that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to right click on a data point and I'm going to say add trend line. Now you're going to notice here that exponential is not an option right now. Um, in some ways, Excel is smarter than Google Sheets. In some ways, it's less smart than Google Sheets. Uh, what it doesn't like right here is mathematically, if we have an, an exponential decay process, it should never go to zero. Our data here actually does go to zero because the physical uh, reality of radioactive decay, we eventually go to zero particles remaining of unstable nuclei. Uh, but mathematically, we never would go to zero. So if I take out the zero here, I'm going to leave everything else the same. And then if I want to go ahead and click on this, I'm going to add my trend line. Now I can see that exponential uh, is an option. OK, here's the problem. I added that linear one earlier. So if I click on that linear one, I'm just going to delete that, take that off. OK, now I added the trend line, but I didn't display my equation. So I want to go ahead and I want to show you how to do that here. I'm going to display the equation on the chart, and that is tiny. And we're going to go ahead and display the R squared value as well. OK. Now, I have this little tiny equation here. And what I want to do is go ahead. I'm going to move this to a spot where I can see it a little bit better. And if I double click on it and highlight the text in here, I can change the font size. So I can change this to a font that's going to be easier to read. So I'm getting that same equation. Y is equal to 256E to the negative 0.693x. Or um, the other form of this, n equals n sub 0 e to the negative lambda x, with an r squared value of 1, because this is an ideal data set that follows exactly the predictions that we would have for um, how this process would occur following probability models. Now, so additional things that we'd want to do, let's go ahead and add some chart elements. So we want to add in axes titles. So I'm going to check that box. And then if I go ahead and click here, axes title, this is going to be put in as the number of half-lives. Uh, and there you go. This is how you use either Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel to graph a data set, which is uh, following a pattern of exponential decay. All right. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you found this helpful.